These tomato fruits show us very clearly why preparing tomato seeds for storage and planting is a somewhat trickier operation than some other vegetable crops we have in the garden. We see that these berries are very, very juicy, lots of pulp, and if we look closely at some seeds that have been removed, we see that they're held in some juicy sacks. Uh, if you just uh, pop these seeds out and try to dry them, those sacks will simply collapse around the seeds, making them all stick together in a mass. With most other fruits, uh, we just let the fruits dry uh, and then uh, break the seeds loose. However, with tomato berries, we're mostly familiar with what happens if we let them over mature. Uh, they become rotten and the seeds end up dead. So, how is it that we get tomato seeds prepared from these juicy fruits? To clean tomato seeds, the first step is to get the tomato seeds out of the fruits. So here are the berries I showed you earlier and I'm going to do my best to just squeeze them out into a container. All of the pulp and the loose juice. I don't need all the meat of the berry, just the, the parts with the seeds. So some of that can probably be cleaned out, but there's quite a few of them. Uh, normally, what I would do is have a fruit and I would cut it up a little bit like this so it's open and I'd give it a good squeeze. And squeeze the fruit until all the seeds have popped loose. And what we get is a nice juicy pulpy mess with seeds in it. Well, that doesn't look very promising, does it? And it really isn't. The next step after getting the seeds into this form is to actually let them ferment so that bacteria and fungi will break down the gelatinous sacs that each of the seeds are in so that we can then rinse them clean and then finally dry the seeds. And I'll show you that next. But first, I'm going to finish crushing these up and then we'll have two to four days worth of letting this sit aside and uh, get kind of stinky. Okay, so after four days, my mixture of tomato seeds, pulp, and juice looks like this. It's still red, but it's got a very nice thick layer of mold on the top, and it smells horrible. I am now going to pull off that mold, which usually is pretty well matted together, and now you can see underneath um, there are some seeds and just the rest of the pulp. Most of the uh, gelatinous material around the seeds is kind of broken down, which is really the point of this fermentation. And I'm now going to rinse that out and throw the uh, moldy stuff away. And I'll show you what the uh, rinsed seeds look like when we get there. The next step after getting the moldy layer off of this little set of fermented seeds is to add some water and then let things settle a little bit because the seeds will sink and then start to pour off some of the unnecessary gloppy pulp which is no longer connected to the seeds. See seeds already starting to get a little bit clearer there. Do that two or three times as necessary and of course if you're doing an actual uh, big full-size garden kind of project or a major seed saving project or if you're selling seed you have much bigger containers than this one. I'm just going to rile that up a little bit and pour off the pulp again. Let that big piece come through. Oh, yeah, that looks not too bad, really. Not too bad. Okay, once more just for fun. Mostly nice, clean seed. And then... Pour it through a strainer. 
I've got fairly decent looking seed free from all of the little gelatinous pulp that it was stuck in before. It's still very wet. I will put it onto a plastic surface and uh, put it in a dry part of the house and let that seed dry. Once dry, I will maybe have to scrape a little bit, but certainly I'll pull it loose from the plastic, put it into a nice uh, paper envelope labeled with this particular variety name, which happens to be Kootenai, and then I'm all set for uh, planting next year. Good luck on your uh, tomato seed adventures.